Moreau's Magic Animals by Anthony Penrose. With illustrations including artworks by Juan Moreau, photographs by Lee Miller, and specially commissioned artworks by children. I marvel at a little bird that can fly. My name is Tony. This is me wearing my finest horse cardigan. I grew up in Farley Farm in Sussex, England. My father was Roland Penrose and my mother, Lee Miller, was a famous photographer. Both my parents were surrealist artists. Surrealists make pictures of dreams. A very special friend of my parents also made art that was dreamlike, strange and magical. That friend's name was Juan Moreau. He came from Catalonia in Spain, where Juan is Spanish for John, but we just called him Moreau. Moreau's parents lived on a farm too. Moreau painted it. Look at the picture opposite. Can you see the dogs? If you look closely, you can see mules in their stable, chickens in the chicken run, and even little creatures like a snail and a lizard. The painting reminded me of our farm at home, but in Moreau's world, it was hot and sunny. In this picture of the garden, all the vegetables are in neat rows. It looks as if there are lettuces and tomatoes and lots of other good things to eat. I was always worried that the donkey might eat all the vegetables, but he seems very well behaved. The painting opposite has some strange shapes in it, but you can also see a horse with her foal and a farmer with his ox. In Sussex, we had a bright blue tractor with orange wheels, but having an ox that you could talk to would have been much more fun. Can you see the rabbit? I don't think the dog has noticed him yet. Moreau also painted the farmer's wife. Look how big her feet are. Moreau believed that if you want to jump as high as the stars, you first have to plant your feet firmly on the ground. I felt sure this strong lady could jump all the way to the stars. I wondered if she would take the rabbit with her. I don't think the cat wants to jump anywhere. Maybe she likes being warm by the stove. Moreau also painted a dog barking at the moon. He put a ladder in his picture. He liked ladders. Maybe he wanted to give the dog a chance to climb up to the moon. I wonder if my dad and I were hoping to reach the moon when we bravely climbed a ladder at Farley Farm. Moreau moved from Spain to France, so he did not see his parents' farm very often. Instead, he painted things from his imagination. Look at the painting opposite, called Harlequin's Carnival. Even though it shows a make-believe world, you can see that it's still full of little creatures, just like on the farm. Moreau mostly painted happy pictures, but then war broke out. A lot of Moreau's paintings showed he was very upset. He moved back to Spain with his wife, Pilar, and their little girl, Dolores. To escape from all the sadness, he created his own world in his pictures. The painting opposite is called The Nightingale Song at Midnight and the Morning Rain. I wonder if the dots are the notes of the bird's song, or maybe they are the raindrops. Moreau came to England and he visited us at Farley Farm. The way he looked at things showed he was special. When he saw something that interested him, he watched it intensely like a dog staring at a rabbit, except his eyes were always kind. He watched our cows coming in for milking, he watched the birds, and he watched us. Can you see the flowers Moreau drew in our visitor's book? Is that a bird among them? With his business suits and polished shoes, no one would ever guess that Moreau was full of imagination and magic. When I see a tree, he once said, I get a shock as though it were something that breathes and that talks.
At the end of Moreau's visit, we all went to London. Moreau wanted to visit the zoo. Another of my dad's friends was Desmond Morris, a surrealist artist who happened to be the zoo's keeper of mammals. Desmond asked Moreau which animals he would most like to see. Moreau replied, large birds, snakes, and strange creatures of the night. Desmond took us into a special building where he presented Moreau with a new friend. It was a giant hornbill. The bird was black, and with its big, strong beak and tufty crest, it looked like something Moreau might have painted. He fed the bird some grapes, and it took them gently without nipping at his fingers. Next, Desmond brought out a giant python. He draped it over Moreau, who beamed with delight. We were all allowed to stroke the snake. It was cold, smooth, and dry. It was nice to touch, but I was glad it had been given an extra big lunch. Desmond had a pet chimpanzee at the zoo called Congo. Congo was an artist who painted very exciting pictures. My dad had even made an exhibition of Congo's work. He bought the painting shown opposite and hung it in our home. We also visited the night animal's house. Moreau loved the chameleon with its swivel eyes that could look in different directions at the same time. Then Desmond gave us a surprise. He held up some food quite a long way from the chameleon. Quick as lightning, it shot out its tongue and with a soft clop, the food was gone. Desmond told us that the, chame the chameleon had a big sticky bump on the end of its tongue to help catch things. Desmond gave Moreau a painting that Congo had made. In return, Moreau made a lovely drawing. It was a picture of the chameleon. Can you see the googly eyes and a long tongue with a sticky bump at the end? Moreau went home to Spain where he made lots of different types of art. Many of the works he created were unusual and mysterious. He was happy to be an artist unlike any other, to look with his magic eyes and see things no one else saw. Can you see the animal shapes in these sculptures? Moreau and Pilar decided to move to the island of Majorca. Moreau built a lovely studio and my dad visited him there. The studio was full of Moreau's artworks, his squiggles, circles, and triangles, his stars and moons and little dots. Important people now liked Moreau's work and his art appeared all over the world. The Spanish people were very proud of him. In his hometown of Barcelona, there is even a fabulous museum of his work. By now, Moreau was old, but he never stopped working. He even designed the costumes for a play called Death to the Monster. The characters look like creatures that have escaped from Moreau's paintings, don't they? Moreau died one Christmas day at the ripe old age of 90. He is still famous today, but for me, he will always be the warm, quiet, and friendly man who loved strange animals and made wonderful worlds for all of us to enjoy. I hope you like him too.